Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Spiritual Superpowers. Today, we have one of our favorite people with us, Marianne Kennedy. She's internationally acclaimed psychic medium, also award-winning psychic medium, uh, teacher, our mentor, published author, the list goes on. So we are so excited to have you back. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me, both of you. I'm excited to be here for today's conversation. All right. So today we are going to talk about the power of words. And we're going to talk about specific words from a metaphysical standpoint. And what we want to do is examine some words and just get each of our interpretations about what these words mean and maybe dispel some myths that these words hold. So uh, let's begin with the first word uh, that we want to talk about, and that word is spiritual. So I'll give my opinion on the word spiritual. So our YouTube channel is called Spiritual Superpowers. And when we were coming up with a name for our YouTube channel, and Don, you can, you know, uh, chime in here if you want. Um, my husband, Barry, actually said, do you think spiritual is the right word? And I asked him why. And he said, because to me, spiritual means religious. And I thought about that for a moment. And I, I guess maybe at some point in my life, I would have thought the same thing. But at this point, I think of myself as spiritual, although I don't think of myself as religious. So my, my concept of the word spiritual has changed over time. So I'm just wondering, you know, let's open up the discussion. Don, you know, what do you think of the word spiritual? So spiritual was one of those words originally that I really wasn't overly comfortable with. Um, but now it, to me, it just refers to the more deeper, more energetic connection we make with ourselves, others and the universe. So to me, to be spiritual is to have your own way of connecting to something outside of yourself, outside of our ego, outside of our logical minds to a place where there is a feeling or sorry, a deeper sense of knowing. Um, and everyone I think can have their own beliefs, their own interests, their own way of practicing it. Um, spiritual is such a broad topic. And for me, it does not have any religious tone. However, I believe that, you know, it might be a big part of other people's religious practice. Um, and my own spiritual practice involves um, meditation, walking in nature, practicing witchcraft, practicing the healing arts, self-care, um, crafting, and acts of kindness. So that's how I view spirituality or spiritual. Okay, and Marianne, you know, how would you interpret the word spiritual? Yeah, I mean, I, I think just like you've both mentioned, we all have, we all understand um, a personal meaning of something related to wherever we come from, right? Um, which sometimes is, is part and parcel of a larger issue is that we always have these personal reference points. And, and I think that it's important to have those. But I think in terms of our own consciousness, opening that up to, you know, the, 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 the perception of, of the other and where the other may come from. And I think that, I think that sometimes it's, it, you know, it's difficult for us to, to have alternate reference points or to consider them. Um, and that's why we sort of feel sometimes immediately comfortable with language um, without having actually examined that language or you know, the origin of that language or the intended use of that language initially. Um, and so you know, for me, my personal reference point with spirituality, you know, I was, I was you know, religious in the spiritual sense growing up, yet I never identified with that word spiritual. I identified with religious. Um, and then of course, over time that evolves and, and again, your own reference points evolve. And so when I think of spiritual, I'm thinking of something soul related or connected to soul, which is sort of like what Don is talking about, something greater than just the personality or ego bodies. And that also includes, you know, re religion in a very formal sense for a lot of folks, not for me, but for others. And so um, I think at some point we have to make a decision when we're choosing language, whether it's for the name of a show or whatever that is, we have to make a decision that I think is, is inclusive of of our own concept of what a word is or the meaning of or the intended use of, and also has considered the potential uh, meaning to the other and how that might impact someone. I think that we have to consider those perspectives and then I think we have to make a decision from there. Um, but I think that the most important part is that 
um, we do encourage ourselves to consider the other in making decisions of either public use of language or even personal use of language. So maybe I just start with that there. Yeah, that is, and that's exactly what I was hoping for us to be, you know, uh, I guess was my intention of the show was to, to talk about, you know, the importance of making a decision that you can change your, your mind, you can change your way of thinking based on how much you learn, you know, you could go by the, the, de the textbook definition, you could go by um, your own personal feeling about the word, your own comfort zone. So it's definitely about making a decision what is appropriate to use and when, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so let's move on to maybe a, a word that um, has a little bit more controversy associated with it, and that word is woo-woo. <laughs> so maybe let's start with you, Marianne, this time, and let's get your opinion on the word woo-woo. Sure, yeah. Um, you know, I recently, I recently had an article published called um, The Power of Words and Why We Need to Re-Examine Language and Reclaim Power. And that was published through veryparanormal.com. And, um, you know, interestingly enough, I mean, I, I've had these uh, ex experiences for many, many years of, um, you know, bearing witness to the use of particular language, using particular language myself, and then realizing at some point afterward, you know, implications of, 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 of using those words or really sort of like a state of personal ignorance and not understanding um, origin. And I think that, that, that we all experience that. I mean, the power of words is, is, so, is so important. And, and what I found in the sort of the <clears throat> position of the article that I wrote is that often we are unaware of the initial intended use or original generated meaning of a word. And so we sort of carelessly or indiscriminately use those words to either self-describe or describe the other. And, um, and the article is just really calling us to examine language in a deeper way, because it's very easy for us to open our mouths and roll out of our mouth, you know, any, any words we so choose on a whim. And so what, what the article is really talking about is being more discerning and examining more about you know, language that we use. And I find that in a spiritual practice or a soul-based practice or life, even if you don't have a practice per se, I find that examining language often is, is very important. You know, I remember years ago when I started doing work um, in the eco bodies, like really, really deep work that I really, really needed. I mean, the, the language I would use to talk to myself was incredibly powerful and in a negative way, in a very um, like non-life affirming way. You know, I, I would often say to myself, I'm afraid of that. I don't want to do that. I'm afraid of that. I'm in this sort of like inner dialogue, you know, the, the vibration of those words became the reality of my life. And so examining language often is, is important and not only the language we use to engage with the world around us, but, but within ourselves. And so woo-woo was one of those words that, that came up interestingly enough, in some of our dialogue between the three of us. And then of course, you know, over the years, it comes up a lot. And funny enough, I was just listening to an interview that I gave about a month ago, and the host also used the word woo woo. Yes, okay. He did. So I'm like, you know, and, and then when I listened to that, which was after I wrote the article, I thought, oh, geez, there it is again, right? <laughs> and so yeah, so that word in particular, I mean, it's mostly a lot of the times it's used in jest, it's used lightheartedly to laughingly describe ourselves as mediums, psychics, witches, um, empaths, any type of spiritual or metaphysical practitioner, um, we use it lightly, but I have never found it comical. And that's probably because, you know, when I, when I grew up, I self identified as a witch. And so I was very conscious of language related to metaphysics at that time. And so when woo woo started sort of coming around as an adult, I started hearing it more. Um, I understood immediately the connotation associated with that, which was um, you know, that it's, it's, it's false belief, it's, uh, you know, not credible, um, the people that are doing it are unrealistic, um, it, it, it is a derogatory term to be sure, even in its actual, you know, Oxford languages definition, and so we use it lightheartedly within one, within spiritual circles sometimes, but I often find that that's because folks are unaware of the orig original use of that word, which is to discriminate against, to belittle, um, and to um, sort of make small those who can connect with the world beyond physical reality. And so it's not something that I identify with. Now, the thing that's important to note, and I do talk about this in the article, is that 
you know, if we can find meaning and identification within words, okay, like personal identification within words that were initially intended to be derogatory in nature or were actually born out of some ignorance in terms of whichever group of people came up with this word. Um, if we can find personal identification and meaning in it, despite that, because we've reconciled with the original intended use or it feels harmonious within us, and that's wonderful. No one, can, no one should be able to take that away from us. Okay, so if someone feels like I'm woo-woo and I like to describe myself that way, and I am educated on the intended initial use, yet I find home in that space, that's wonderful. Like no one, no one should take it away. Um, but what I find, it, what the article is really calling for is do understand the original meanings, okay? Because you might find a home in it because you, you may not understand how it was initially applied societally. And so examining that is important. Um, and that for me includes the word woo-woo. So, so, you know, the, the self-identification piece, if, if you can find home in that um, super, do so from a space of, of informed understanding. And that's, and that's true for words, not just in spiritual practice, but in life, right? Mm -hmm. Who are we to, I mean, if, if, as it relates to spirituality, religious practice, um, lifestyle, we should be the only people to assign our, our, our identifying words. No one should be able to apply that to us, nor should we apply that to other people indiscriminately. We don't have a right to do that. Extremely well said. Thank you so much. And we will be sure to include a link to that article in our description below because it is well worth the read. And I guess if I could go next, I actually want to continue on from what you said. And that's, um, I, I fully believe that um, understanding the original intention when it comes to the word and maybe even the definition is important. But if you do find comfort in a word um, to own it and and uh, hopefully that will create change down the road. And to me, woo-woo is one of those words because to me, it's a gateway word. Um, it's an umbrella term that we do use lightly to speak of the metaphysical, mystical, supernatural, paranormal. Um, and it's a word that people might choose to use. And it was a word that I chose to use when we weren't comfortable enough or familiar enough with the other terms. And um, if I can just give an example of um, how I kind of view woo-woo and it's uh, a personal story that um, you know when I was in high school I decided I was going to become a masseuse and it wasn't until afterwards that I discovered that the proper term was massage therapist but I didn't know what I didn't know and now when people refer to me as a masseuse I just recognize it as innocent ignorance um, I know they don't mean to insult me um, they just don't know what they don't know so now when I'm having a conversation with someone, if they use the word masseuse, I just simply reply back with massage, you know, like I, I will say, yes, as a massage therapist, I will, you know, and then that way they at least have a more appropriate term to use. But some people um, think that the word masseuse is prettier and kinder than the cold clinical title of massage therapist. Mm -hmm. And they feel it suits my wholehearted approach to my practice and my patients mm -hmm. versus the, the, the title massage therapist. So when I look at the word woo-woo, to me, it's a cute word. And in my own personal journey, it empowered me to ha start having those conversations about the metaphysical topics and the arts. And so now when I am with lay people, I do use the, the, the term woo-woo. However, I'm, if I'm speaking to someone who is a professional or someone who is experienced at spiritual arts, then I will use the proper terminology in that conversation. But until I was ready to uh, build my confidence and um, comfort around those other terms, woo-woo was my comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think we all come from those different points. You know, I've had many, uh, because I've done my work like publicly and professionally for so long now, I've had many, you know, numerous, countless experiences of folks using that word to try to engage in conversation with me, but the tone in the use of that word um, was such that um, um, was such that they were actually expressing their viewpoint through tone and the use of that particular word in such a way to make me feel like what I was doing is illegitimate and that I should oh. be able to explain or prove that to them. Right. And so I've, I've had many of those experiences where lay people, okay, are very well aware of, you know, intended meaning behind that word. And so while I recognize it can be a bridge word for conversation, I would also bet that some of the people that referred to you as masseuse, right, 
were also ignorant, unaware, or didn't believe in maybe the educational background and the professional training that actual massage therapists are required to do. Because historically, there were lots of, this was, this was an unregulated profession. Anyone could do it. They would just learn to rub a body part, a muscle category, whatever that is. And they, massage therapists weren't recognized as, um, you know, sub or paramedical practitioners or whatever that is. And so um, some people still are, would be unaware of really the status of the work of massage therapists akin to same idea as, you know, referring to professional mediums or psychics or healers as woo woo people, right? It's the same idea where I've had lots of those experiences where those terms are being used knowingly in a way that disempowers the person that's being described by it. And so again, you don't have that experience, right, Don? But I have. And so there's that personal reference point that comes in. Yes. And that's why it's so important to have this type of dialogue because, right, we can hear Don's reference point where it feels very innocent to her in almost all of her encounters with either woo woo or masseuse. And then we'll have my reference points that look look very different. And so each of us has to honor what the other is experiencing and let us all have a voice here. And this is this is the the wonderful sort of miracle of this show that we're doing right now is that we're giving all of you know all of our voices an opportunity and and likely you know viewers are going to be able to hear all of that and they'll find out where do they sit within that. Uh -huh. All right. Now I'm curious Karen, <laughs> how do you feel? Well, you know, my dilemma is when I'm trying to explain to people um, about what I do, I do a lot of different things when it comes to spiritual services or spiritual modalities. And it's hard for me to come up with a word that is an umbrella word that describes it all. So, you know, do you, do you say metaphysics? Do you say spiritual? Do you say... Um, do you say paranormal? Um, because even paranormal means it's not normal, right? Which I think all this is very normal and we all know that this is, you know, normal. So I guess there's just not a word that is a good umbrella word. So, I mean, sometimes we was just people kind of know what that means, but I, but I also understand there's people can take it different ways. Yeah. So my my use of the word is mainly because you know it's not um you know thinking maybe about the word as much as i should but just not having another word that i feel comfortable using or not that i feel comfortable using but i just intellectually makes sense to me to describe the the umbrella of what we do yeah and i think that the uh, you know the evolution of one's own language like anything else takes time and so we often spend a lot of time in the space where we aren't, we haven't found um, resonance with a particular word to describe something that we do. And, 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 and we have to be okay in that period. And then oftentimes we have filler words, right? What, what does for now? What can I use now? And then I'll use that word, you know, until I find another space to occupy in terms of describing myself. And that's, and that's true for a lot of us. I mean, myself, you know, myself included, um, my practice is so, expansive as well and so if someone asks me to boil down into you know an occupation or a word to describe you know what I do or my practice is very challenging to do it and so sometimes I'll choose to say something like a teacher which is usually how my kids describe me um, <laughs> other times I'll, I'll say I'm a medium other times I'll say I, I'm, a, I'm a spiritual practitioner it's really it's hard um, but I think the important thing is that even in that discerning stage or that figuring out stage, which can be, you know, forever, um, that whatever we use in between, let us just think about it. Let, let, us, let us spend time examining that language. And then even having, you know, mock conversations with ourselves to say, you know, if I were to be asked this question, how might I respond to get comfortable with language? Because comfort in language is, is, you know, identifying it as one thing and then being comfortable saying it and talking about it can be a totally other endeavor. So having those conversations to ourselves with ourselves is often important in figuring out, you know, as our language is evolving, figuring out what works for us. All right. Yeah. You know, I mean, we could, we could examine this uh, topic a lot more because it is quite interesting, but uh, let's move on to another word. And 
this word is um i know uh there's a lot of um there's a lot of misconception a lot of myths associated with this word and that word is witch mm-hmm. so who wants to start why don't we start with dawn this time okay well i'm feeling witchy <laughs> <laughs> um uh yeah which is one of those words that can have a derogatory tone to it unfortunately um and it can mean so many different things to so many different people so to me the word represents someone who practices manifesting through universal law of attraction but we call it magic uh we use rituals some pagan rites feminine sexuality uh and spell work um so which is kind of they practice based on their own interests and it's not a religion i should say that first it's not a religion it's a practice so you can have um you can be a witch that is non-denominate non-denominational or you can uh find lots of witches in every and all religious practices um some worship deities some worship elemental spirits um and some don't uh it's really broad um but i believe there is an common element of mother earth and nature in most or all witch practices um and but it's completely completely unique to the witch um okay so i'm going to use some other examples if you can <laughs> you for me with this because it, to me it's just two sides of the same coin it's all in the way that you look at what your interpretation of a witch is um because i i really think we can see it in every day uh you know in people's every day i don't know schedules or you know m- movements or you know anything like that so for instance okay let's look at making a wish so when you make a wish when you say blow up the birthday candles or you make a wish um when you see a shooting star that could be considered casting a spell um people coming together in church and singing a hymn could look on the other side like a covet coming together in song performing a ritual right um yeah so it's 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 all in the way that you look at it and it's based on our personal programming that dictates whether we are um whether we're singing happy birthday because it's what you do when the cake comes out or you look at the deeper intention in that moment and see it as people coming together in song and wishing someone happiness and that could be considered spell casting so i'm just going to throw it out there we could all be witches <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> yeah. okay and marian why don't you weigh in here sure yeah um well you know my experience with witchcraft was w- initially within the context of religious practice um when i was a young a younger person um and and certainly there's no worshiping involved in 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 that aspect of paganism in in, in wicca and, and often actually there's often no worshiping involved but it's rather a deep reference reverence for nature for deity for mother earth whatever this is um but um so i have personal reference with the word and um i find the use of the word incredibly empowering okay but i want to mm-hmm. contrast that with woo woo and i'll tell you why okay because the history of the word witch is so much more lengthy yes. than the word woo woo and so we have over time while the word witch has incited you know violence mostly against women i'm um, not exclusively mostly historically um you know the killing of women um you know a major upheaval in societies and families and it 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 has it has been a majorly destructive word in history um especially toward feminine power and natural power the natural world mm-hmm. um but what we've found is that because that history has become is so much more elongated than the word woo woo which sort of came about in maybe like the 70s or 80s um what we found is this long evolution of history the evolution of human consciousness the evolution of language and then eventually what we found with the word witch and witchcraft was safety societally in using the word okay so like initially you know when we first started describing witches how many centuries ago there was no safety in the use of that language and so people would move away from it it's very dangerous and what we found is that um as our societal views became more tame and evolved in consciousness and things um you know words became less um 
powerful and detrimental to the use of one's life, we found the reclamation, the slow reclamation of the word, which we found empowerment in that space because you now couldn't do anything to us. And so when we step back into that, and that's part of the, you know, the discussion around the article that I wrote is reclaiming power through words. You know, if we find the origin of the word witch, which would be, you know, something like the earth dwellers, the people out in the country, this type of thing, um, we don't find a necessarily a negative intended use of the word. It, it grew a connotation over time, but the intended word in and of itself isn't derogatory. And so we have found that we can see large, you know, you know, think about Starhawk, real, you know, leaders of paganism and witchcraft and, um, you know, social, even social justice, reclaiming that word witch. And so if you find power in that word, you go for it. But I will say um, that often it takes being able to identify with community in some way to feel safe to identify publicly as witch, right? Um, if we are on our own in this journey and all of our friends have you know, no connection to, you know, witchcraft or anything like that, it can still be a scary word. But what we've seen is we, we can, we can find safety in it, because there's historically what they did to us before, they can't do to us now, they can do it in a in a societal way of sort of shunning or um, shaming someone or attempting to, but they can't kill us for it, you know, and that change that seems so drastic, right. But that was the reality of that word. And that has evolved. And so I find that word empowering. Um, but not only because of its own evolution, but because its initial, um, you know, the, the, the sort of etymology of the word wasn't um, a destructive one. Yeah, well, it's interesting because, you know, looking at the three words that we've talked about, I would, I wouldn't hesitate to use the word spiritual. It's in our YouTube channel name. I, I am, I'm thinking a lot more about the word woo-woo. <laughs> But which, I don't know, I, I would hesitate to tell someone that I'm a witch still today, you know, because I yeah. think there's still probably more misconception about that word than any of the three words that we talked about. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with you, Karen, for sure. There yeah. is, for sure there is. So, and then that, then that leads us to this question, right? Like if I'm afraid to use the word, I'm afraid to use the word because of how people will respond to me. Yes, and yes. so that just means that we, that for, for, for those that identify as witch, but are afraid to use it, then we're just still in the process of reclaiming the power of who you are and the language that you choose to describe it. And each of us are at different points in that journey. And we have to honor that. And we can't, you know, we can't say to somebody, ah, you are a practicing witch, but you're still afraid to talk about it. And that's a problem. It's never a problem. And who are we to say that, right? So each of right. us finds this space along the journey. And, and so, you know, and, and you, and which may not be part of your vocabulary because you may not even, I, you, and you, you may not identify as that. Right, right. So it's never been something you had to consider. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I don't, and it's not like, you know, when you call me a witch, you mean it with nothing but love, right? It's not yeah. like you have that, that uh, tone to it um, or any malintention. It's, it's just maybe not a word that you identify with. Yeah. Yeah. I think that, came out of you explaining to me what a witch was about yeah because up until then I had that well I had the Wizard of Oz you know <laughs> thinking of what a witch was but there were good witches and there were evil witches <laughs> and that was about it you know so um <laughs> yeah well hopefully after today's episode people will I don't know spark some curiosity to look into the terms a little bit more or walk away with um, maybe a different perspective of what the word means. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. that's the idea of today's conversation. So Thank you, Marianne, for taking time out of your schedule to come and talk to us about this. Um, we really, really appreciate it. And I hope everyone clicks on that link below and reads the article because you're such a good writer and it, it, it um, includes so much wonderful knowledge and, and, uh, and information. So definitely to our viewers, read that article and, you know, go to Marianne's website. We'll include a link to that below too, where you can find other articles Marianne's written, links to the TV show Ghosts of Dufferin County, and uh, a little bit more about, or a lot more about your uh, School of Psychic and Medium study. Thank you yeah. both so much for having me on. I love having these conversations and um, it's been a great time.
Great. Mm -hmm. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And so that is it for today's episode. Looking forward to seeing you guys soon. Thanks so much.